And then when he wakes up, he has authority over the storm. We have authority over the storms that we're able to sleep through. Freedom from anxiety does not have a whole lot to do with your circumstances. It has to do with trusting God. As long as we're calculating with only what we can see in the earthly realm, we will have plenty of reason to be anxious because God's provision for you in your life includes both earthly things and heavenly things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God spoke into the nothingness, the chaos. And He said, let there be light. And there was light. The sky, the wind, the waves, color, wings, feet, cuteness, everything seen and unseen was fashioned and formed by Him. And then He began work on His masterpiece. Male and female, He formed them in his image, in his likeness. And with them, he created the first relationship. It was anxiety-free, peace-filled with him. He put them in a garden and gave them a boundary. And he told them not to step outside of that boundary. Enters the deceiver, snake, asking, is he really good? Did he really say not to step outside of that boundary? And enters anxiety for the first time questioning the goodness of God, if he's real, if he cares. And that first man and woman took the feet that God had gave them and they stepped outside the boundary and anxiety was born. The relationship that once held peace changed and began to be undergirded with fear. That fear and anxiety began to multiply in their marriage, in their kids, in their grandkids. And before long, we have a population of people and the soundtrack of their lives has transitioned from peace to anxiety. Anxiety, this torment inside of your skin, this inability to escape and find a place of rest, this crippling fear that keeps us from blooming into who we're made to be is pervasive in the earth and had covered the earth enters Jesus, a living, walking, breathing Sabbath. To touch him was to touch rest. Being near him was like being near the best kind of fire, where your heart just warms and begins to melt. And in him, there's no anxiety. And 
he faces this giant external storm. He's leaping through it. Everyone's panicking. There's a whole lot to be worried about out there. Wake up. Peace. Be still. And the external storm comes to rest. And he steps out of that into the face of a man with a severe internal storm, violently oppressed by demons. And instead of running away, he faces the severity of his anxiety. Peace. Be still. And this living, walking Sabbath of a man looks into the heart of humanity separate from the Father, full of anxiety, and chooses to give his life to absorb the punishment, to absorb the fear, to absorb the anxiety, every anxiety you and I will ever know. He absorbs it into his body and he takes it to the cross. And he gives his life. He pours it all out to overcome the pit of anxiety, which is death, hell, and the grave. And when he emerges in life, he emerges with an invitation to an anxiety-free life. I'm here tonight to tell you that there is freedom from anxiety. And my posture is compassion because it's a severe form of suffering and it matters to God. He knows what your face looks like without fear, and he's longing to see it again. Beloved, I know what it is to have a lot of reason to be afraid, to be facing crisis day after day after day, to be fighting life and death battles morning and evening in my own family with my daughter. And I got to the point where I told the Lord, I don't think I can survive this anxiety and I had a vision of a red panic button on me that was being pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and I saw Jesus pull it out and throw it away and I lost my ability to panic. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
You may or may not like what I'm about to show you. <laughs> but this next picture, to me, is a picture of freedom from anxiety. This is an old painting of Daniel in the lion's den. Freedom from anxiety does not have a whole lot to do with your circumstances. It has to do with trusting God. And there's some reasons why it's difficult for us to trust him because stuff happens that we don't understand. But the weaker our trust gets, the higher our anxiety gets. And I believe that you actually have the fortitude to stand in peace in the face of lions. And I think that's what freedom from anxiety looks like. Rest is resistance. <laughs> peace is resistance. And I'm so grateful that Jesus came and pioneered a life without fear so that we could know that it's possible and glean from how he processed difficult things in order to walk through this life without fear. And I want to highlight to you five things we see Jesus do as resistance to anxiety. And I want to invite you into them. So the first is that Jesus didn't wait for his circumstances to improve to live with peace. <laughs> Oftentimes we think that peace is going to come when everything gets perfect. You're going to be waiting a long time. <laughs> Take a look at this next painting. We have had this hanging in our bedroom for months because we've needed it. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me one day about this painting. My husband Mitch had discovered this painting. He said, Katie, that's Sabbath. That's Sabbath. Your ability to sleep in the midst of the storm. This is Mark chapter 4. Jesus sleeping in the storm. And then when he wakes up, he has authority over the storm. We have authority over the storms that we're able to sleep through. Sometimes passing time is a noble goal. <laughs> I wonder if he fell asleep so that he wasn't tempted to be anxious <laughs> by the storm. The temptation is to become reactive to the external chaos that's going on so that you are sucked into becoming a part of it, which is outside of your identity. So I hope that this is good news to you. No matter how crazy your life is right now, you don't have to wait to be in peace. You can be at peace now. You can live anxiety-free now. This is an invitation to us tonight. Secondly, when Jesus was faced with anxiety and people around him, he didn't reflect and mirror and absorb it. He healed it. This is a key for living an anxiety-free life. Make a decision that anxiety to you is not contagious. I can't catch that. I just can't. I'm immune. Right? 
This is Mark chapter 5. This man with these demons that Jesus sets free. You don't have to tiptoe around anxiety. You're there to heal it. We're here to heal it. You're on the earth to heal it. This is a daily resistance <laughs> because we're faced with so much of it. This is a daily resistance to not react, reflect, mirror, and absorb the anxiety that's going around us, but to heal it. Thirdly, <laughs> we see Jesus embracing his limits and staying focused on his assignment. In Mark chapter five, there's an intense series of events happening of ministry moments of him and his disciples trying to get away and then all these people following them, interrupting their retreat. <laughs> there's a whole lot going on there, but if you, track just the activity of Jesus there, you will find such an intense focus. He wasn't trying to take everything on at the same time, and he was not over-functioning. And there was a man with a sick daughter, Jairus, who had come to him, and he was not rushing to get there. This, the verse actually says he ignored them and told the man, have faith. A lot of us deal with anxiety because we're over-functioning. We're taking on more than we can actually realistically do with peace. And there's this pressure <laughs> to perform and to go, 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 and it causes anxiety. When you're able to accept your limitations and focus on your assignment, it's a resistance to anxiety, and peace lives there. Fourthly, we see Jesus exert faith for heavenly provision for earthly needs. Here in Mark 6, we have 5,000 hungry people and anxious disciples. <laughs> it's like, what are we going to do? And Jesus says, you feed them. What? You feed them. You actually have in you a connection to another world that has provision you need. As long as we're calculating with only what we can see in the earthly realm, we will have plenty of reason to be anxious. Because God's provision for you in your life includes both earthly things and heavenly things. And it's a resistance to anxiety to live with an awareness of both worlds so that you're not triggered by what's missing in this one when there's plenty of it in that one. So next time you look around and you say, this is missing, or this is missing, or this is missing, and I'm anxious because of it, remember... There's another world to calculate <laughs> from. That's part of the world you belong to. It's your true home. And there's more than enough. More than enough. And fifthly, Jesus was deeply committed to a rhythm of rest with the Father. In Mark chapter 6, after all these moments of ministry and miracles, we see him Go up the mountain with the Father. It's a resistance in your life to anxiety to establish rhythms of rest with the Father. And your anxiety will be increasing when you don't have those in place. I know this because it's so hard for me to preserve my day with God and my time with God, the busier that I get, and then I become anxious. <laughs> there is a source of peace, and he's a person. 
So in order to maintain peace, we need time with the person. Here are some things we're finding helpful. So from our trail to yours, rhythms of rest, daily time, weekly time, monthly time, <laughs> and annual time. If I were to have you hand over your calendars to me right now to check on your anxiety or rest level over the next, let's say, 30 days, it would be telling. And I have a challenge for you. By this time next year, I challenge you to have in that calendar these rhythms of rest that you'd be able to hand, me my, hand your phone over and I'd be able to say your Sabbath is gonna be there, there, and there. You're gonna take a break in January or in July or whatever. Why is it so hard for us to nail this stuff down when we do so much stuff every single day? because there's a war over this time. It's where you get your peace in retreating with the Father. Here's some things I would like for you to know about anxiety. And to the guys in the back, this goes back to the slide in the beginning, truths about anxiety. Anxiety is a thief. It has one agenda, and that is to rob you. Sometimes it feels like a friend because you feel safer with it. And in some ways, it does keep you safe. But it keeps you safe in an oppressive and binding manner. And there's a better way to stay safe. It actually does matter to God that you feel safe, that you're not being triggered, that you're not panicked. It matters to him. But there's a better way to stay safe than being covered in anxiety. It's being covered in him. Because as much as anxiety will isolate you and keep you from certain experiences that are scary to you, it never stops robbing you the entire time. And you actually have authority with him and with your brothers and sisters to kick the thief out. It's part of the personality of our enemy did you know that he's afraid all the time? If you were to just see him, you would say, oh, that's a really anxious being, super scared. Expressed in such extreme darkness and rage, but afraid, anxious. Which is why it's uncomfortable for you to have it because it's not your design, it's not your size, and it doesn't look good on you. <laughs> That's why we get all uncomfortable when we have it, because it's the wrong thing, it's the wrong size. It doesn't pair well with sons and daughters of God who are created to be at peace. We all deal with anxiety at some level. So if you're here and you have extreme experiences with anxiety, no shame. <laughs> we all deal with it at some level. There are also some natural fear, fight or flight responses that are important and necessary, but I'm not talking about those tonight. 
I'm talking about an undercurrent and soundtrack in your life of fear that's oppressive and robbing you. It's not your identity, doesn't look good on you. But whenever you come back into peace and joy, I believe the Father says, ah, oh, there you are. You're made for that. If you have anxiety, it's not because you're a bad person, it's because you've suffered. It's a wound. It lands on a wound. The good news is, beloved, you're not stuck with it. You're not. And I don't know why the Lord told me three weeks ago to preach on anxiety tonight, and I've never done this before. But I know that it's for some people that are here because you need to know that you're not stuck with it. And maybe it's the whole thing is just for you. Rest as resistance. You think we could mobilize an army of people that were prepared <laughs> to resist anxiety through resting in God, sleeping through storms, confronting storms, retreating with the Father, and taking this invitation that Jesus died for to live an anxiety-free life and have in a relationship with him, an anxiety-free relationship. We can actually experience that because Jesus reconciled us to the Father, an anxiety-free relationship. Can you imagine? We can have that with him. We can have that with him. I want you to get your life back. Every moment of fear that the enemy tries to steal from you, I want you to get it back. And that's what I'm here to intercede for and contend for and stand for tonight. Believe that Jesus is walking around the room, offering to take your anxiety and depositing peace. And it would be like him to do it very softly and gently, I think, because he has compassion for those with anxiety. I don't think he needs to yell about it. <laughs> I think he'll just take it. I think he'll take So I bless what the Holy Spirit is about to do and is doing already with peaceful, gentle deliverance from anxiety of all kinds here tonight. Is there anything else on this slide deck? I think we're done, right? Oh, it's a review in case you wanted a picture <laughs> to take home for declarations. <laughs> Rest as resistance. Rest as resistance. And then there's declarations we're going to do at the end that are on there, but not quite yet. Okay.
And in the name of Jesus, I bind any spirit of fear that would want to interrupt this time, and I forbid any demonic activity in Jesus' name as people get set free from anxiety in Jesus' name. We want to share some testimonies with you of people getting set free from anxiety. And then we are going to pray. So the first one is a video. Kelly, just wanted to give a quick testimony of my own experience with anxiety and healing. When I was in middle school, I had a pretty big trauma involving a lunchroom um, and just didn't realize how much that affected my life. I knew that I didn't like small crowds more than even big crowds. Um, I would get just freeze. I wouldn't be able to speak. I would just be mute. I just knew I was trapped. And um, about 12, 15 years after that incident, I had someone pray for me and they prayed and they prayed the spirit of shyness off and I felt it left off my shoulders. And since then, Jesus has been on a journey with me of being able to experience his peace in the midst of crowds. I used to have racing thoughts and it actually looked like always having a song stuck in my head. I thought that was normal. I thought everyone just always had a permanent song and starting to realize at the time that that wasn't, that was a sign of my mind and my body trying to calm itself. Um, and just many ways that Jesus has met me in healing steps. And since then I've been able to experience way more times where my mind is at peace and calming. I don't associate racing thoughts. In fact, if they start to race, it's actually a sign that I need to go and spend time with Jesus. So Jesus has shown me transform mine, Romans 12 too, um, but also just that experiencing his peace um, in my body, in my mind. And I just want to release that, that if you have racing thoughts, if you have that social or group anxiety that Jesus can meet you in his beautiful and unique way and give you that healing of being able to uh, just experience shalom of heaven with him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, Natalie's going to read just two or three others that came in when we, we put out a call to just some people in our community. Share your stories about freedom from anxiety. So the first testimony, she said she was bound in fear and anxiety for years because she was burglarized shortly after she was married. One night her husband happened to be away for a training and she was home alone and she found a large man in her bedroom. He didn't realize that someone was home, so he too was startled, and thankfully the man turned and ran downstairs and climbed out a window. The police came and found that nothing was missing, but I was shaken to the core. After this experience, whenever my husband was away, I would be anxious at bedtime. I was a Christian. I knew Jesus, but not intimately. I didn't realize that I had authority over anxiety and fear. So anytime he was traveling, I would load my gun and I would keep it next to my bed and turn a lot of the lights on outside and try to get sleep. After some time and after starting ministry school, I was laying in bed anxious, trying to go to sleep with my loaded gun. And I got to thinking, anxiety isn't from heaven. I don't have to live in fear. This anxiety and fear is a gift from hell and I don't want it. I feel these impressions were a call to pick up my authority and set things right. Jesus, I don't want to live in fear. Please forgive me for partnering with fear. I'm sorry for tolerating this. I speak to fear and I tell it to get out and never come back. It was a short and powerful prayer and I didn't really feel anything major, but I knew that the fear had left and peace had come. I unloaded the pistol, put it away, turned off the lights, and I went to sleep. And since then, Jesus has freed me from anxiety from that night forward. Another testimony. Jesus didn't heal my anxiety in one swoop of a breakthrough moment. For clarity, my anxiety was so intense that I couldn't enter large stores or buildings. I would constantly feel like I had eaten something poisonous or was having an allergic reaction that I was going to die on the spot. Jesus met me in remo renewing my mind daily. It wasn't an instant miracle, but it was sort of like cleaning the, cleaning the house at the end of the day. 
Lord, is what I am feeling true? Lord, what do you want to give me instead? Rinse and repeat. A slow process, lots of ther therapy, but it's been a long time since I've had anxiety of any type. I found that even when there's a slight moment of miraculous breakthrough, you still have to go back and learn how to live in your new situation. The third testimony. In 2020, it was discovered that my daughter had an autoimmune condition, and so a few months later, she needed surgery. So instead of starting her freshman year of college, she and I spent a lot of that fall in the hospital, returning three extra times due to various complications. The trauma from this experience as a mom led to anxiety about doctor's appointments and being in the hospital. However, earlier this year, 2023, I was journaling and I forgave all of the real and perceived offenses that I felt towards people related to my daughter's illness. Doctors, nurses, friends, myself, church elders, etc. I asked Jesus, what these offenses looked like, and I saw myself in the hospital room holding a pile of medical garbage, used needles, etc. I extended my hands and I gave them to Jesus, and there he was, a cheerful orderly pushing a cart down the hall ready to take my garbage. Jesus then came into my room as a doctor to give discharge orders. I still felt stuck in that hospital room. Holy Spirit revealed that punishment was keeping me there. And soon, and as soon as it was revealed, I felt it physically lift and the hospital room was filled with flower vases. Pop, pop, pop. I was ready to leave and Jesus wheeled me out in the wheelchair, burst, bursting with sunlight. Everything was warm and colorful and I rode happily off in a motorized scooter with wind in my hair. A few months after this encounter with Jesus, I was back at the hospital with my daughter for a test. And while I was waiting, I wandered down the hall and it struck me that I actually felt normal. I felt at peace. I didn't have chest tightness. I didn't feel the need to pray fran frantically, but he truly had healed me from all trauma and all anxiety. Okay. Thank you. He will do it. Okay, beloved, I would like, um, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand, and I'm going to minister corporately here on this topic, and then uh, we'll open up the prayer line for additional ministry tonight. Uh, but I want to invite the music to come, the, Joe, if you can come help us. Thank you so much, Joe, for all that you do. You're so amazing. <laughs> And I'm really excited, Joe, to partner with you right now in ministering in this area. That's good. <laughs> because you have a piece to bring in the room, and we honor that. <sighs> All right. That's basically what I have to say, so I invite you to stand. I'm going to lead you first in repentance. You do not have to repeat after me. This is your choice. I want to invite you, it's your decision, to repeat after me in a moment in repenting for partnering with fear, anxiety, and stress, breaking agreement with it, forgiving those who contributed to it, and giving it to Jesus. Okay? Before I do that, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. You're so kind, you're so gentle, you're so full of peace. You're the safest place in the world. And I ask that you would walk around the room and just gently deliver people from anxiety tonight. It would be your work beyond anything that we have to say or pray. I know that you're excited to see people's faces emerge again without fear. And I feel him saying that some of you didn't know that you were living with anxiety, but you are. 
like you haven't rested in a long time and that is a sign I'm waving the flag like what's what's really driving you why are you not stopping what are you afraid is going to happen if you stop giving yourself permission to be still some of you know you deal with it but I'm saying there's others here who didn't know but you'll know now as God shows you that anxiety has been at work in your life and it's robbing you And I hear him saying, I love you so much. I love you so much. I'm excited to be in an anxiety-free relationship with you. And I hear him inviting you into it by name, calling your name. would like to, I invite you to pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I repent for partnering with fear, anxiety, stress. I repent for defending, protecting an ungodly connection to a spirit of fear. I repent for times that I've been hidden because of anxiety. And I repent for times I've taken control because of anxiety. And in Jesus' name, I choose tonight to break any agreement, communication with a spirit of fear, spirit of anxiety, spirit of control, spirit of manipulation, spirit of ungodly hiddenness. And in the name of Jesus, I command a spirit of fear to leave me now. Jesus, what do you want to give me in exchange? Give your heart permission to be at peace, to finally lay down and rest. And I bless your brain to be rewired to pathways of peace in the name of Jesus. I invite Jesus to do for you now what he did for me in removing your panic button, pulling it out and throwing it away. I bless your heart rate to come back to normal in the name of Jesus. I speak to the tightness in your chest to relax in Jesus' name. And I declare healing in your body for every imprint your body holds from anxiety and fear in the name of Jesus. And I bless the chemicals in your body to balance out rightly to your divine design to live in peace. I felt the spirit of fear leaving when you cast it out. 
And now I'm seeing Jesus with his hands restore your body and your soul and your spirit from the imprints of the anxiety. I bless the healing hands of Jesus to bring back to you the things that you lost from fear. And in the name of Jesus, I cancel the lie that you've lost time that you can't recover. And I declare that God redeems time and he will redeem time. And tonight is the best night <laughs> to step out of anxiety and fear and begin a new life. He makes all things new. I bless your heart to come into a place of deep peace with the Father. Those of you who have felt really far from God, angry at God, maybe you've even hated God. He's never been far and you don't have to pay your way back. I bless you to fall into the embrace of the Father right now. To know that you are deeply loved. You don't have to explain yourself. He's not requiring it. He's just saying, welcome home. Welcome home. And I break off of you any title someone else has put on you of being an anxious person or feel fearful person. A person who retreats instead of advances. And I declare you are brave and you are courageous. You are an overcomer. You are strong. And honestly, you probably know that deep in your spirit because you've survived and overcome so much. In the name of Jesus, I declare here tonight by the power of the blood of Jesus, freedom from anxiety and hundreds of people running into a place of deep peace. I just see the Father breathing on each one of you and breathing new life in areas that have been hidden by anxiety. And so I just speak to those areas and I just say, live, enjoy the fullness of joy of life. Live, enjoy the fullness of joy in life. I just see the Father's eyes locked on each one of you. Permission to be a joyful person overnight. <laughs> Permission to be a brave person overnight. Permission to run forward in your identity. Permission to be happy. <laughs> Permission to smile. Permission to not be afraid. Permission to be someone that God uses to set people free from fear and anxiety. Permission to fall asleep in the storm. Permission to command the storm and people to be still. Permission to rise up quickly in a fortified position of peace in your daily life experience. Come Holy Spirit with a baptism of peace Hello, Global Awakening family. We hope this message was a blessing to you. Katie Lou shared this last year at our Unbroken Conference, which focuses on inner healing and deliverance. If this message touched you, we want to invite you to this year's Unbroken Conference. It will be held on October the 10th through the 12th at our headquarters here in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. You will be equipped and receive ministry from Dr. Mike Hutchings, Katie Luce, Dr. Rodney Hogue, and Natalie Canodal. We hope to see you there. God bless.